Hello, good day, and welcome to Programming Language Compared. So today we'll be looking at complex numbers in Groovy. Sorry for the delay in posting the video, but work has been really crazy and I'm even working this weekend. But anyway, um, one other correction. Last week video I said oh, there wouldn't be any video next week because I'm traveling next week. That's not true. I'm traveling the following week. So um, so this week, coming week here, um, there will be videos, but the week of October 16, I'll try and see if I could make some videos before I go. But again, sale work has been pretty crazy. But thanks for your patience. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, but I'm definitely trying my best. All right, so let's jump into it. So like I said, the Java JVM plat um, language, the JVM languages do not have complex number built in. And this is true in Groovy also. But we're going to see that we're going to be able to use complex numbers in a way that make them look like if they're built in. Specifically, we're going to be able to say A plus B um, using the op plus operator that you know from, from you know, basic um, arithmetic, right? Um, and that's going to look just like we use plus with in Go or C or C++. And yet, we cannot do that in Java, but we're going to be using the exact same library. And that's because there's a feature in Groovy and Scala that allow you to do operator overloading. It's the same sort of feature you have in C++. Now, because complex number is built into Go and Go doesn't have operator overloading, well, that's why you can use complex number like any other number because Go just treat them like any other number. But in Groovy, we're going to be able to override the operator plus and make our complex number look like if they're built in. But they're not built in, as you will see. All right, again, we're using the exact same complex library, the Commons complex library. Same thing as before, we're going to just play with some simple things like addition, multiplication, and use one of the other more advanced um, mathematical operation like power or absolute value or something like that. Let's get started. So we're going to start off by taking a look at all the files we had for our Java example. And you can see this is what it looks like. Um, number of files, but if we, if we clean up things, this is the, in essence what we really need, just the pump file and our main.java file. And using Maven with the pump file, giving it instruction, we can always rebuild our deliverable, which is the jar file, which we can compile, package, and run. And that's very easy by typing maven package, okay? And of course, if we type maven clean, we get back to where we were. So one of the things that we did when we wanted to create a simple maven application, we went on the web, we look up simple maven project, and we saw this command that allows us to say, generate an archetype um, a project, and this is the group ID and artifact ID and all this other stuff. And we just really changed those two things. And then we run this long, scary looking command and it gave us the directory structure, which I just showed once we do a cleanup. That's all it was. It was these 13 empty directories and really two files. But we want to use Gradle instead to build our application. Now we could use Maven and Maven plugin, but Gradle is actually written in Groovy and we want to compile Groovy code. So why don't we just use um, group Gradle? So Gradle is the newest build tool on the block today. And it's getting pretty popular. And you will see, um, in a way, it's a lot easier than Maven to use. This mirrors what we see in programming languages too. A programming language that come after sometimes tend to be easier than the one before. That's why I'm kind of frustrated when I see languages come after and just mess up things. But here's something very, very cool about Gradle. So before you go and install Gradle, feel free to install it if you want. Um, I advise you if you're going to be learning Groovy, or even if you're not going to learn Groovy, but you're a programmer and you want a new build tool that can build Java application, Groovy application, Scala, C, C++, you name it. Um, Gradle is the one tool that seems to be able to do it today. All right. So one cool feature about Gradle, so yes, you can install it and you probably should if you want to do that. But if all you're doing is following along in this course, you can see that oh, there's this feature in Gradle where you can just clone the project. Remember, I push everything in GitHub clone the project, and you're going to be able to build the application using Gradle, even if you don't install it. So that's the comp. I'll show you that later. Now, um, once you have Gradle installed, um, and you create, let's say, this empty file called build.gradle, it has, contains nothing, and then you run um, the Gradle command, it's going to show you help. By default, it runs the help task, as you can see there. The task that was run was help. And it shows you all these things. It can tell you how you can run Gradle task, specifying a task. You can run Gradle task, um, you know, to list all the tasks. And of course, um, you can run Gradle help to um, see um, help about a specific task. And so we're going to come back and use that later on, but we'll see. Again, I'm going to list my directory here. And you can see this is the only file I have. And this Gradle hidden directory where once I run Gradle, it's installed some stuff in there. Now, when I run Gradle um, stat task, 
to list all the tasks that are available, even though my build that Gradle file is empty, notice that there's this inner task that I can run. There's the wrapper task um, that I can run. Um, there's that help task that I mentioned that um, get runs by default when you just run Gradle. And um, of course, at the bottom is the task one that we, we just run to list all of these tasks. The other one is task properties. Um, we're going to run task properties and you're going to see that there's some properties here for a project that have been provided and some that haven't been provided. So like, for example, version is um, a property that is unspecified. And so too is um, like description and path and a whole bunch of other ones. Um, but the reason why I want to pick out version and description um, is because we're going to go and we're going to set those now in our build at Gradle file. So if we go to Gradle, build at Gradle, um, this is actually a Groovy file. So without going into too much of the syntax of Groovy, I'm just going to say if these values um, properties are equals to this value. Then I'm going to go back to the command line, rerun my Gradle properties task. And when I check, um, those properties are now defined. Okay. So you can ver verify this by scrolling back and forth through the list and seeing that they are defined. If you run Gradle by itself, it runs the help task, but you can also specify help if you want. And that you can see when you run task, you see all the tasks, you see help is one of the tasks there. Um, now we want help on the wrapper task. Now why wrapper task? Well, this is the one that I mentioned, what I mentioned earlier when Gradle allows you to be able to create in your project and, um, the, include with your project the ability to run Gradle, even if that person doesn't have Gradle installed. So this is the wrapper. And so when I run this, you notice it puts this Gradle directory, not the hidden directory, the Gradle directory, and then this Gradle.w, which is the wrapper, and then Gradle.w.bat, which is for people who are on Windows. So people on Unix-like system, they can run just Gradle.w and wrapper for wrapper, and people on Windows can run Gradle.bat. Now, if you just clone this project and you run Gradle W, it's going to be the exact same thing as just Gradle. And so um, the reason that they, they, they name them differently is because you have Gradle installed in your system. And then now inside your project, you're going to, if you they just call it Gradle, you'd have another Gradle. So they just call it Gradle W, um, the executable. And so inside the Gradle directory is the jar and everything to for the current Gradle that you're using. The advantage of this actually is really, really nice, is that if I build my project with Gradle 2.4.2.1, then you clone my project, you get the exact same version of Gradle to work with. Um, and if you have Gradle 7 or whatever install, then there's no problem because you'll just be rebuilding my project with a Gradle that I provided. And notice when I run Gradle W, I see all the same things that I would have seen if I had just run Gradle alone. So that's why I said earlier, if you don't want to install Gradle and all you want to do is be able to play with these projects, then just clone the project and you'll have Gradle and you don't have to actually download Gradle. So it's really, really, really nice. I think that's an awesome feature and none of the other build system have something similar to this. Okay, so now we want to look at the init task. So again, we can do help dash dash task and we want the init task. And if we look there, we can see that the init task um, allow you to build out a uh, project for a Groovy application, of course, which is what we're interested in because we're doing Groovy. Um, when we're using Maven for Java, we created a Maven project and, you know, put our Java code in it. Now we want Gradle to create a um, project for us and make it a Groovy application. So before we go do that, though, one last thing um, before we delete our Gradle that build that Gradle file is look at how to define a simple task in Gradle. And it's very easy, but this is great Groovy syntax. So I don't want to spend time explaining Groovy syntax, but I just want to show you that you can easily define your own task. And when you ask for all tasks, you'd have to say that oh, you want all tasks. When you run the task command, you have to say you want all tasks to see your new task that you've had it and it's on the other task. Okay. If you just run Gradle task only, you'll just see all the other um, built-in tasks and tasks you get from plugins and so on, but you won't see the ones that you've defined and you build that Gradle file. All you have to do is append the dash dot all, all option onto the Gradle task command. And so you can scroll back, slow down the video, you'll see that I did that and I list um, other tasks and you see hello there, which is what I defined in my build at Gradle. And I was able to run hello that um, Gradle that hello, you know, Gradle hello to invoke my hello task. Okay. So now I want to go create this project. So I just wanted to do show you a simple task before define a simple task before we do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove everything that we've done, make an empty directory once again, and then rerun that init task. Because remember the init task, if I specify a type and I say I want group groovy application, it's going to give me a groovy application. So let's go delete everything now and clean up 
and ensure that oh, we, we don't have anything at all in this directory. So zero directories, zero files. And then, um, once again, Gradle help dash task, because I want help on a specific task and the task I want help is on in a task. And then I want to specify the type as groovy application. So I'm going to run Gradle in it task invoke it. And notice when we run the tree command, what we have, we have a build at Gradle file, which is the empty file we had created and then add things like version and description to. But now we can see it all. They have applied two plugins. They have applied a plugin for groovy stuff. Then they have applied a plugin for an application. And these are plugins they already give us. And those plugins give you tasks already appropriate for doing groovy things and tasks appropriate for doing building applications. But we're going to look at those in a minute. The other thing is on line 31, it says there's this property called main class name. And if you just give it the name of the class that you want to start when you run your application, well, it's going to do that for you. So let's take a look and see how this works. So if we go back and look at the tree here, you'll see they have a certain directory structure. And if we look at the directory structure and compare it with our directory structure for Maven, we'll see that it is identical. And when I say identical, I really mean that it's identical. Now, um, down to the subdirectories. And later on, um, if you look for if you wanted to compile Java and Groovy classes, you'd have, you'd have to put a directory called Java on the main, and this is where you put your Java code. But because we're doing Groovy code, we just have a directory called Groovy. All right, so as you can see, I'm showing you how similar these are by first comparing the pom.xml to the Gradle that, um, build that Gradle file, the source directory, the main directory, and instead of Java, we have Groovy. But like I said, if you have group Java code in your Groovy project, which you can, then you'd have a, a Java directory that is parallel to your Groovy directory. And because in our Java application, we have a package comes traversity complex. That's the only reason why we have that subdirectory there. But app.groovy is not, is in a default package. So it is not in a subdirectory. But don't worry. We'll actually move over, um, our main app, that Java code, turn it to a Groovy file and put it in a package also. And you'll see that it works the exact same way. So now if I rerun the command Gradle W and ask it for what tasks are available, um, remember, um, know that we have a new build that Gradle file that has these two plugins, Groovy and application. They're going to add some tasks. And here are some of those tasks that they have added. Um, we have a run task for application. So we can imagine that the application plugin gave us this run task. And then, you know, the build task and stuff probably come from applications also, because it makes sense that if you have an application, you want to do things like assemble, build, build dependency, check out the build dependencies, build all the classes, clean and so on, package up as a jar and whatnot, um, do a test. So, so that makes sense for an application. Um, the other thing that, um, we might want to be able to do is, um, distribute a tar or a, geez, a zip of our, um, application and of course run. So if we test run, and we call Gradle W with run, it runs our application, which is that app that groovy. All right. So let's go and replace app that groovy with our main, um, that Java file that we want to be working with. And we copy it to the same location for now. And we're going to delete app that groovy. We don't have our main that Java in a package. So we have to uncomment that. We don't have the Apache Commons um, library yet. So we should un uncomment that. And we're just going to groovify this file a little bit. We're not going to spend too much time on it. There's actually not much to do really, but we make it a little groovy ish and my word. And then, uh, groovified. And then, um, we're going to try and run it, um, using task, griddle wrapper, um, run. And so now we have to modify our build to say it instead of app, it's going to call the main which is our main um, file. Now when we go run it, it fails. And it says, if you want to see more detail about why this failed, add the minus stack trace. And so we add that and we see all these errors. So what is wrong? Well, remember what I said about if you put a file in the Groovy directory here, <clears throat> it has to be a Groovy file. So we need to rename our Java file to be Groovy. And so that's what we did. And when we run it, now it runs successfully. And there we see complex number being printed out. So that tells us that it's actually running our main that Groovy file. All right, let's go put this in a package. So we're going to create the direct package structure for comms traversity complex, put main in it. And of course we have to say our main class name is in this package. If we run it again, it fails. And the reason it fails this time is because, um, even though we're pointing to the right class this time, our file itself says that oh, it's in the default package. So we have to change that. And now this runs successfully 
and everything is good and great. Good. Now we are ready to address the idea of um, what, how do we handle dependencies. And when we look in Maven, we see that this is how we handle dependency. So here in our Gradle, build a Gradle file, we put dependencies, we say we want it compile time, and this is how you specify it with the same group, artifact name, and version as you do in Maven, but in Maven, it's an XML file. And now in Groovy, it's just a string with colons separating the different parts, right? And so I just literally copy that and modify it into the string. And the one on line 21 is just saying that we need all this Groovy stuff. And we know that from when we compile some Groovy code in order to run it, we have to have all the, the rest of Groovy um, jar supported, right? And so now if we go back and we run, it runs successfully. And so I'll speed up um, on commenting different parts of our application at a time and run it and running it. And you'll see that oh, we're able to run it successfully until we get to one very specific part. And when it fails, I'll have to explain why it fails because it doesn't seem to make sense that it would fail. And so here you'll see now it says it's failing on creating this new complex number for Z. And the reason is why does it fail? Well, it's pointing to the wrong place. It's failing because we have one that. And the reason this is a problem in Groovy is remember everything in Groovy is an object. So when you put a dot after the one, it's saying, oh, I have the object um, one as a number. And when you say dot, I think you want to invoke a method, but where's the method? There's no method that comes after it. This works in Groovy and Go and Java when I put one dot because those treat one as a number, a basic number, not an object. And so it was not a problem. Um, so what we have to do is go back and modify our code and make this one dot o or whatever in the case that since we want anything. And then we can run it and it works successfully. Now, when I uncomment the line to print it out, I have another failure. And this one is a little bit more interesting um, because what it's saying here is there's a groovy exception for a method that is missing. And it says no signature of method or that Apache commons that math three, that complex, that complex class, that plus. So groovy is looking for a method called plus on our complex class that's inside this package, you know, complex uh, math three, that commons, that Apache, that work. Um, so why would it look for that? And it's saying that oh, um, the value that's being passed to this method that is a string with st the value star, right? And to understand why, when we go back and we look at our code, we see here Z4 plus. So that's where the plus is coming from. So Groovy is interpreting that plus operator as a method called plus. And in the string that we pass, trying to pass it, it's saying, oh, you really want to pass a string. So what is going on is in Groovy, when you say object operator oper operand, it's the exact same thing as if you say object that operator and passing the operand as a parameter. As an example, um, you can four plus five the string is the exact same thing as if you had said four plus, um, in this case using the spell note the word plus, and then passing the string five. And this is just a groovy thing, and we'll see it in Scala too. Same thing with three times seven is the exact same thing as if you say three that invoke the method called multiply and pass the number seven. And we'll see why this is now why we're able to say that oh, we can do like complex number plus in Groovy, even though it is not built in, complex number is built in. And the same thing for index. And there are a whole bunch of them. I'm going to show you a list of operators that you can overload, which is a feature that showed up in C++ and, you know, it's in um, Groovy and Scala. Okay, so it's looking for this plus method. So what we really want to say is, no, I want Z4 to be a string and then add another string to it and blah, blah, blah. And you might be surprised as to why it works when it gets to Z5. Well, because by the time it gets to Z5, it wants the value of Z5 to add to a string, which is the previous thing. And so it just smartly said, oh, since I want Z5 as a string, I'm going to call it to a string method. And then same thing when it gets to the end where it's Z4 that multiply, it's a complex number, but the previous thing that equals a string. So it adds to the to string there. And that's because evaluation is done from left to right. Okay. So now that we have that out of the way, we should be able to get everything else working. And now we will just groovify the rest of our program. And that includes removing unnecessary semicolon in most places and so on. And so that works. Okay. So let's revisit this idea of doing addition. So what if we wanted to do a complex number D is equals to A plus B? And we rerun the code. We'll see the error message we saw before, which is, you know, I, I'm looking for this plus method. And this time, the parameter it's I'm expecting to see is, um, you know, a complex number. And we could see where this come from, because remember we're saying 
A plus B. And so it's looking for one parameter and it's saying, if you start from the green, it's saying plus is, there's no meta plus that's um, applicable for the argument of complex, which is blue, and of the value in red. And we see that value in red comes from where the yellow arrow is pointing, which is B, which makes sense because we're saying D is equals to A plus B. So B is the parameter today. Remember how we can say A that plus the method plus and then pass in the upper end um, B. So that makes sense. Okay, so if we jump over to Groovy and see how it's trying to evaluate uh, method calls, there's this chart and you could work the chart from the bottom where you see this Groovy lang um, throws, you know, missing method exception. Or we could go back up and see how we can get there or you can start from the top and come down and say, well, okay, it tries to, um, if the class doesn't implement Groovy, implement intercept, then no, then, you know, come down and you follow the path. It doesn't really matter. What's important though is that since Groovy is looking for a plus method on this class, maybe we should provide it. And this is a really, really cool feature in Groovy where you can augment or add things to a class after the fact. So the complex class does not come with a plus method. It comes with an add method, but we're going to add complex. Now we can't really go in and modify the complex class after the fact because that is not allowed by Groovy or Scala or even Java. But what you can do is in Groovy you use this meta class. So this, this meta class property that we can add things to this class. And so by adding to meta or plus method, and again, I'm not going to explain Groovy syntax here, or we're assigning a closure to that plus method. No, when it Google start navigating it, it's going to see that, oh, in method, there's this plus method. And so I'll invoke it. So we're not going to, we're not going to get down to the exception. And so our method implementation here is very simple. It's simply return a new complex number that's one one. We just want to see if that works in the first place before we actually try to do the full implementation. And when we go back to the command line and we run it, we see that how it works. So no, I'm going to speed through the implementation of our add the plus method in Groovy. And so we're going to accept a, the right hand side, um, which is our uh, upper end, you know, B essentially. And we can access it and print it out. And we can also print out our own real and imaginary parts. So let's print those out. And if we can do that, plus get our right hand side argument, well, then now we know how to actually add, do addition. And we can do that by correctly um, creating a new complex number with real and imaginary, then invoking the add method on it and returning the result. And so now we could get out, get rid of all that sort of debug information. And we can see now we can add two complex numbers in Groovy with the add operator, making it look as though it's built in. And since complex come with multiply already, we can just change this out for the multiply operator. And it's going to work. Why? Because we're exploiting the fact that when Groovy sees multiply operator, math operator is instead trying to call, is going to instead turn that into a call to the multiply method. And when we run our code, it works. And again, this is all cool. And this, this is a list of, um, operators that Groovy allows you to override and their name. So if the people, who, um, guys who are girls, whoever the people who wrote the complex um, library for Apache Common, I'd use add in, um, use plus instead of add. Guess what? We would have, our application would have worked and we would not have had to written that plus method, but no big deal. It gives us an opportunity to just play that feature of Groovy. So right now, um, we are done with everything that we really need to do in terms of looking at complex number in Groovy, but I want to fool around a little bit more and look at this idea, but what if we wanted to add a string to a complex number? What does that look like? And of course it fails and it tells us that though, um, it's expect a string. So why not override another plus method with a string to accept a string parameter? And what we can do is pretend that if we're past adding a string to a complex number, we can look at it and see if that um, string is I. And if it's I, then we're going to print out that complex number in one way. Um, and then if it's not I, then we'll print it out another way. And while we're at it, we might as well just take care of um, if it's I or J, because people use either I or J when um, printing out complex or defining complex number. Now, we might be, might be able to do some work to make it so that we can also say um, a complex number is just, you know, um, and Groovy would allow that, you know, three times five I or something like that. But anyway, um, if I go back and run this, um, I don't like how it's showing up now. You see, notice how I is inside, J is outside, but I want if it's I or J, it shows up inside the complex number when I print it out. And if it's anything else, it shows up outside. Well, I have a bug here where I'm missing a close parentheses, but once I fix the close parentheses, now you can see that when I run it, 
it works. I have I and J inside when I print it out and K outside any other letter or string. But I also could do better. I could address the case when I have, instead of always using plus, if the number is negative, well, how to print that out. But again, all I wanted to show is that with Groovy, you can do these sort of extension on the, um, in terms of how you print out things or how you actually use it with the built-in operators that actually make it look like if it's built in, but it's not, but you'd have to do some extra work. All right. So that's it. I hope you found this really interesting that given that the Groovy is a JVM language, um, it is able to add certain capabilities um, to the JVM that is not even there in Java. And we're going to see the exact same thing with Scala. When we look at Scala and complex numbers, we can use the same library and we use Gradle also to build our Scala application. Um, and we'll do something similar to this where we're going to be able to add, override an operator and use it. But until then, thanks for your time. Thanks for your support. Really appreciate it. Um, thumbs up um, the videos, constructive criticism, please. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thanks to the new subscriber. Um, description field contains um, links to the code in Git, clone it, and then, you know, play with it if you don't want to install Gradle or clone it and look at the code. Um, again, if you want to contribute, feel free to contribute by those different methods in the description. Otherwise, so that I'll see you in the next video. I'll try and post a bunch of videos so that while I'm away, two weeks from now, you guys don't miss videos. But otherwise, so that, um, take care. Have a great, great day. See you.